Good morning, third graders. It's good to have you back from our three-day weekend. We had our extra Monday to help us relax and recuperate for a brand new week of math. So let's take a look at our problems for our DMA. Normally, we would have day one on Monday, but today, Tuesday, we're going to do day one for week 17. So again, we're on week 17, and we're going to be doing day one. So let's take a look at our first set of problems or equations. We have our factor, which is 50, our factor, which is 3, and our product. We are looking for the product or the total amount together. So if I had three groups of 50, remember I can use the order property to help me. What would be easier? Is it going to be easier to add three groups of 50 or 50 groups of three? That's a lot of threes. So let's take a look at adding three groups of 50. Now remember, if you were thinking about base 10 blocks, we would have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So 50 is like counting by fives. I'd have 5, 10, 15. Well, in this case, I have 50 and 50, which is 100, and then another 50 would be 150. So we're counting or adding 50 each time and just like counting by fives, 5, 10, 15, we have 50, 100, 150. Okay, let's take a look at 60 groups of 4 or 4 groups of 60. Again, doesn't matter which one. When we add 4 groups of 60 or 60 groups of 4, it should add up to the same amount, which would be our product. So we have 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60. So if you remember, 6 plus 6 is 12. Well, 60 and 60 is just 6 tens and 6 tens, which is 12 tens. And 12 tens is the same as 120. So these two groups of 60 are 120. And these two groups of 60 are also going to be 120. And 100 and 100 is 200. And 20 and 20 is going to be, if you said 40, you'd be correct. So we have 240 when we add four groups of 60. And finally, we have four groups of 50. Now we could use what we just learned up here from our three groups of 50, we learned that that's 150. If we just add one more group of 50, now we have our four groups of 50. And if I add another 50, remember 50 and 50 is going to make a new 100. And then we have our 100 here. So we're regrouping that 100 to the hundreds place. So think of it like this. We have five tens and five tens. 10 tens is a new hundred in that hundreds place. Right there, that's a new hundred. So that tells us we have two hundreds. All right, let's take a look at our uh, word problem. It says there are eight girls in Katie's Girl Scout troop. So. These are our groups, and it says each girl decorated three gingerbread men. Each girl, that means each group has three gingerbread men. Now, the question asks us how many gingerbread men did the girls decorate all together? So, all together means they want a total number. And if we're looking for a total number in our question, we're either using addition or multiplication. Now, multiplication, remember, is having the same amount of objects in each group. And since each girl decorated three gingerbread men, we know that it's going to be a multiplication problem. So, eight girls, and so 
Let me go ahead and go to the back, draw a model for you guys. Let's make sure that we're remembering how to use our modeling. So remember, this is eight girls. So I'm going to use bars, and each bar is going to represent one of the girls that's in the Girl Scout troop. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one more would make eight. Now, what does each girl have in her group? She has three gingerbread men, and I could put a G here for gingerbread. Three gingerbread men. So each gingerbread man is going to be represented inside each bar, which represents each girl. Now, if we know how to count by threes, we could say three, six, nine, three more makes 12, 15, 18, 21, and 21 and three more makes, right, 24. So there are 24 gingerbread men that are going to be decorated. Total gingerbread men. Because it, remember, it asks all together. So we could say our multiplication fact is going to be eight groups. The girls are representing each group. Three gingerbread men. Each girl is decorating. And my girls are the... And what am I asking for? What is the question wanting me to find? Gingerbread men. So total gingerbread men, we can say that we are going to have 24 gingerbread men. And remember, I can use the G, and we call that a variable, and I can use the G as what I'm looking for. What is that missing What's missing in that equation? So now I can write my response. So we have, so the girls did what? Decorated. Twenty-four gingerbread men. And I know you guys don't really like having to write this out, but it's super important to be able to write out your thinking. So please make sure that you are continuing to practice this skill. The girls decorated 24 gingerbread all together because... If you have eight groups with three in each group, you will get 24. Adding the threes, right? So we've drawn ourselves a model. We can see our model. We've solved our equation. And now we've placed our answer into a response that goes with our question. So now we can come back to the front and take our equation, write it up here in the front, but don't forget that you're also showing your work in the back. So let's take a look at our addition equation. We're looking for the sum. Remember this is called your sum. We have the add end, add end, sum. So we're taking these two amounts and we're adding them together to find our total, our sum. Now, we can't use multiplication here. Why? Because these are not equal groups. However, if I were to say 436 plus 436, that would be two groups of 436. 
but we can't use multiplication, so let's just take a look at our addition sentence, and we can say that there might be an easier way to kind of solve this. This is very close to 300. How far away from 300? is just four more. So since we're combining these amounts, I could take from my 436, I could add four here to 296 and make this an even 300. Now, if I take four from this sixth, that's going to have me left with 432. But remember, I'm combining these to find a total. So remember, it doesn't matter the order in which you're adding, you're still combining the same amount, whether you take it from here to, and add it here, it's still included in this number when you put it together. So you can't do that with subtraction, but you can do it with addition. So if I take this 400 plus 300, that's 700, 30, there aren't any tens here, so that's gonna stay 30, and I have two, so that's 732. Now, if I were to do the same thing and add, I would still, if you notice, I would still get 732. So 30 and 90, well, this is 10 more away from 100. So if I take 10 from here and add it here, that'd be 100. This would be 20. Now I have 120. We see that we're regrouping this 100 here in the hundreds place. And we have 6 and 6. And 6 and 6 makes a new 10, making it 12. I add these together. And you'll notice I still get a sum of 732. Again, if I use my algorithm, it should not matter. 6 plus 6 is 12. I carry the 10 to the tens place. 90 and one more 10 makes 100. So that 100 is going to go here. And there's 30 left within that. So I, I add that into the tens place also. So that's 13 tens. I carry that new 100 there to the hundreds place. 400 plus 100 is 500 plus two more hundreds is 700, 732. Lots of different ways to take a look at this, but again, same idea. We have a missing divisor here, guys. And when you have a missing divisor, we can add groups of eight to 48 until we get to 48, because we know our total is going to be 48. Well, if I know three groups of eight is 24, then I can add another three groups of eight, and that's going to make another 24. And how many groups of eight was I able to make? Since 24 and 24 is 48, I had one, two, three, four, five, six. Six groups of eight to make 48. So when I divide, that means I'm taking this total and breaking it up into smaller groups. We want to know how many of those smaller groups of eight we were able to make. So our divisor is six. Now for our division sentence here, we're missing our dividend. That means we don't know what the total is. So knowing what we know about fact families, we can use the groups and the number in each group, or maybe this is the opposite, shouldn't make any difference. If I know I have seven groups of eight, then that should give me my product here, which is going to be the dividend. So I could actually use what I just did up here because I know I have six groups of eight. What is six groups of eight gonna make? Right, 48. So if I had six groups of eight is 48, then what's one more group of eight going to be? Right, eight. 
So if I add these together now, my seven times eight is the six groups of eight and one more group of eight. And eight and eight is 16 and carry that 10 here to the 40 and now I have 56. So my missing dividend is going to be, oops, 56. Why I wrote 54, I don't know. And finally, our last one, and we're gonna talk about remembering our pattern within nines or the finger trick, which is also another, another trick. It's not necessarily a strategy, but it is looking at patterns. So if I have patterns of nine, I want to get to 63. How many groups of nine does it take for me to get to 63? Well, remember, nine plus nine is 18. One group of nine is nine. Two groups of nine is 18. Three groups of nine is 10 minus one. So add 10, which is 28, minus one, 27. Now, you'll start to see this pattern of one more 10 here, but one less one here. If everybody understood me correctly, I'm going to have another 10 here, but one less one here, which means that's that pattern of 10 minus one, which is making that nine. So add 10, subtract one. Now I'm at 36. Add 10, subtract one. Now I'm at 45. Add 10, subtract 1, now I'm at 54. Add 10, subtract 1, now oh, I'm at 63. Now, how many groups of 9 did I add in this pattern? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and finally 7. Now, if I were to continue this pattern, it would be... We're looking at add 10, subtract 1. But you'll also notice in this pattern that your 10s are increasing while your 1s are decreasing by 1. So let me repeat that one more time. Your 10s go up or increase by a 10 each time. Notice I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. But here in your ones place, it goes down a one by one. So 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and back to zero. So cool pattern to see. Make sure um, that's something that you think about when you're practicing your nines is that pattern. So that's today. Make sure you have these done and looked over by live meeting today. And we'll talk about these during our math lesson today. Have a great day, guys, and see you soon.